Hello YouTubes! Welcome back Haunt Fam. Today I want to build this. This is a burlap body bag. It's $325 online and I think we can do it for less than 50 bucks. Cowboys went shopping, we got some stuff to put together, and we're going to make our own victim body bag today. Okay, YouTubes, so Cowboy's been a shopping. I hit up the dollar a days, and I got all kinds of crap to use. I got some Spanish moss for a dollar a piece, can never have too much. I got some tablecloths to use as uh, uh, sheets to work on. I got a pair of tongs, don't need those for that, some shot glasses, not for this. And, also from the dollar a days, we might need some of this, don't know what that's for. Uh, Tin foil, might use that for this project. I don't think we'll need it, but this one is the bag that counts. So, over to dollar days. Okay, rope. You get 10 feet for one buck. It's pretty good stuff. It's thick hemp rope, I like it, so I bought all of it. And then I got some pole noodles, bought some. Okay, I bought all of them. I bought the whole damn box. And I also have a tarp here that's just a canvas painter's tarp I got for two bucks at a yard sale, like, year and a half ago, two years ago. We're gonna use that instead of burlap because it was only two bucks and it's cheaper. You can get a you can get a canvas painter's tarp anywhere. I will hit up my favorite thrift shop, the one I usually go to. You guys saw my thrift haul video. And I got a pair of old work boots. This again is gonna be an option heavy video. You can change out or do what you want or add to your bodies. But I like doing the realistic approach, so we're gonna go this way. And these guys are actually Timberlands. Ah, oh, crap, man. Look at that. We got some Timberlands. And are these gel inserts? Oh, man, they got gel inserts, too. Look at that. So somebody spent some big dollars on these things. And we can use those for another project. So we're going to use Timberlands. I got an old Milk Just Jew, Milk Juice Jug we're going to use for the head. And I went over to uh, Dollar General, and I found me a little sink uh, dish thing where you dry your dishes on, Rubbermaid, a wire dish rack. So we're gonna start with this. Let's get the table set up and start building our body. Okay, YouTube, so we got our uh, painter's tarp laid out, our $2 uh, yard sale painter's tarp laid out. I went ahead and took a milk jug or orange juice jug. This is gonna be the head. I got a little hole drilled in there. Uh, my plan is to go ahead and take the rope, one of our dollar store ropes. And again, I love this stuff for a dollar. It's such a freaking deal. Um, and go ahead and shove that through the little hole and then we're going to tie a knot in it and that's going to act as our head. So we're good. We can load it up into the gallon again and this will be our head. So we got our boots. Like I said, I got some Timberlands at the thrift shop for five bucks. So how do you not beat Timberlands for five dollars? And if you want to do a female victim, man, you could use a pair of ladies' boots, a pair of high heels or whatever. Um, or you don't even have to use shoes at all. I just want the weight for the bottom because I'm a hole haunter. So this thing's going to be outside for 30, 40 days, dangling around in the wind. And I want some weight at the bottom. So my plan is to put the weight at the bottom. I got some uh, Loctite foam here. I want to use some pool noodles and make some legs. So we're going to tie these shoelaces together to keep them uh, close. There we go, something like that. That way we're not losing our uh, shoes or they're coming off. I'll double knot them because it ain't going to matter after this. And I'm going to fill these shoes. Get the tongues out. Alright, let's load them up with some Loctite. I'm going to jam that straw all the way in there. Alright. I got one filled up to the toe. We're going to go over here, fill this guy up. Try and fill that whole toe area in. Like I said, you could use uh, ladies' shoes or ladies' boots. Don't matter. All right. So I think we're filled up to about there. So the toes are basically loaded. Let's take our pool noodles and jam them in that foam. Yeah. Get in there. All right. Get in that shoe. And I'll go ahead and backfill, and then we'll put these guys aside and start working on the main part of the body. 
Okay, YouTubes. So our boots are foam filled. We got our pool noodles uh, installed. We're gonna put these guys aside, let them dry. We're gonna move on. So I was walking around Dollar General and I found this little dish strainer where you dry your dishes in. It was only five bucks. And I thought, man, let's make this to chest cavity. It's about my size. I'm a six foot tall guy. So I thought, man, this is gonna be perfect. I did want to think about using a storage bin, but once you drill holes in the side, they're more prone to break and splinter. So I didn't want to go the storage route rack. Um, or the storage bin rack. So I got this guy for five bucks. The only issue is we've got these little uh, feet sticking out. So if we don't bend these down, this guy's gonna look like he's got nipples you can dial a phone with. So let's go ahead and bend all these guys in so we don't have no issues. We'll make this the outside of the, the rib cage. Like I said, it was only $5. So, so far we've got some $5 thrift boots, a $2 tarp, a free jug of orange juice, and a $5 dish strainer. And we've got this little thing where the little uh, forks and knives dry. We're going to use that as the neck. So let's go up there and work on that. So I'm going to take the rope. I'm going to go through the little distrainer thing for the soap, for the uh, forks and knives and all that stuff. And this will be our head. So I want to have a little bit of movement in the head, a little bit of swing, so you can clock your jug any way you want. No big deal. So I'll go ahead and tie this guy off. And maybe I'll do a loop through the uh, through the handle too, just for the hell of it, for strength, in case the plastic lid ever pulls off. Because again, this is gonna be outside, and we gotta make sure it's bulletproof. So I'm gonna get this head on, and then we're gonna move on to arms and legs. Okay, YouTube, so we got our dish strainer rib cage tied to our milk jug head. I got an extra piece of length of rope hanging off the bottom, our dollar store rope. I did go ahead and tie in a piece of chain so we can hang our body from a chain. Um, you can still use the rope, it doesn't matter. I got a piece of rusty chain, I thought that was cool, so I figured it was free, I'm gonna use it. So our table being six feet long, we're gonna put our head at the top, roughly there, and we've got plenty of leg to tie on our boots later. So for arms, I wanna go ahead and use more pull noodles. I wanna kinda keep them around the front. So I kinda figure measure, my hand is here, my shoulder is here, god damn lighting. All right, I'm gonna go up here to the top of the rib cage, and I'm just gonna feed a pull noodle in, to where I want it. And that is about the length of my arm. So I'm gonna feed the other one in. So we'll have a pair of arms. And then I'll drag this guy right to the other side. Get in there. Or actually that fits pretty good in like the neck. Maybe I'll do that. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, so here is our chest cavity, here's our head, and let's uh, measure the arms. This arm's going to be about here, down in front, so we'll snip that off, don't need that, and then let's go ahead and, and we'll glue our hands together so it looks like he's bound hands in the front. We'll just stick these together, and if not, we can uh, spray glue them. Get them nice and molten. All right. Okay, Haunt fan, we're moving right along. I got some zip ties to secure the hands. I heat gun them a little bit to shape them like they were cut together. I put a couple of zip ties in the top of the shoulder, and I simply just tuck this one back. So basically, our top half of our torso is ready to go. We've got five, six, seven, eight, eight dollars in the top half of this body so far. Um, because this guy's in a hangout site, uh, I want water to be able to drain down off of him, ice, snow, freezing weather, all the crap we get here in Indiana. So at this point, you could shrink wrap if you wanted, you could corpse it if you wanted, just to kind of hold it together. Uh, I decided I'm going to go ahead and use a garbage bag just to have a big water shed on the bottom because it's pool noodles. Nothing here can hold water. So I'm going to do some work on the head later. Uh, I had an idea. So I just want to throw a little spray glue on it. All willy nilly. And it got to be perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and bag this head up. Just like that. Okay, YouTubes, so I went ahead and I bagged up the head. I put a little zip tie around the neck, no big deal. Made a hole in the back so our hanging chain can hang out. So I think our top half is pretty much done. Like I said, we've got five, six, seven bucks in it, plus a couple of zip ties. Um, I went ahead and got the feet back, they're drying. 
they're getting there. Uh, so what I want to do is lay the feet back. Like I said, this table is about six feet long. I want our victim to be like a full six foot size guy. So I'm going to go ahead and take the pool noodles and I'm going to jam them right inside the uh, little dish strainer where they got to be. Okay. Then I'll adjust them when I get them out. Something like so. All right, that's pretty cool. So we'll take this lead rope and then we will tie off our shoelaces, which you probably can't see. I'm sure I'm blocking with the camera. And these are going to hold the weight of the legs from being torn off of the, uh, the disc strainer. So we're going to go ahead and tie these guys off. Help cut that weight. And we'll just leave the rope hanging out on the bottom because it'll look cool that way. Okay, YouTubes. So I've got the uh, extra length of rope on the boots. I tied these guys together so they stay together. I put an extra length of rope and tied it to the rib cage so we can use that uh, to wrap around the body and he has something to anchor off to. So I'll just leave that up there towards the head. I did poke a hole and pulled the chain through the back of the uh, painter's tarp. So now we can kind of drape this thing how we want, cut off any excess, and we're in for like 20 bucks, including the rope and a $2 uh, painter's tarp. It's cheap and it's gonna be totally convincible. So we just wrap this guy up. Come over here. And if you want, you can go back in, you can add some spray foam in the legs. I took one more pool noodle. I split it just to pad up the thighs a little bit. But again, there's plenty of excess here. And in fact, you could even just tuck it around. And like I said, if you want to go back in, go ahead and use your tarp. You can foam it in and you'll be fine. So we're gonna wrap this guy with his hands here, his head over here. All right, I'm liking that. All right, let's fold this side over. And man, we got the rough shape of a body already. How freaking cool is that? So we can tear up the tarp or cut it. I kind of like the boots hanging out just like that. That's pretty cool. I like going and foam a little bit. Maybe we'll do that. We'll foam in a little bit in between the legs to fill it out. It'll help tie it together and we'll just let it expand. So we'll do a little more spray foam. And that'll help tie the legs together. Okay, that's cool. So, let's just wrap that. And we can bring this over. Want them boots sticking out. All right. And then, this part is up to you guys, man. Just go ahead and distress your, your bag. You can, leave, uh, you can leave runners or make a jagged. I tried to find the dirtiest part of the tarp to put it on the outside. Uh, to make it the most nastiest with all the paint and overspray and stuff. Uh, let's see, we'll go by the head. I think for the head, I'll go ahead and take a length of rope. Thanks, Drac, we'll use yours. And I'll tie off the head right now. And we'll just tuck that down there. Like so. Oh yeah, that's cool. Perfect getting caught up in it. Okay, so now we got that body shape. So let's make this a little ragged. And again, we can distress it, whatever we want. So I think now what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm just gonna use foam to hold this down. I mean, why not? We can put some foam down and pad it in. It sticks to everything. Got his hands. So we can just use a little bit of foam. Under the hands, under the head. Man, this is gonna be easy. Don't even need glue, and then we'll rope. And I've even got some plastic chain. We could do some chain if we want to. It'll be awesome. And since this stuff sticks to everything, might as well just finish off the can. Just like so. All right, guys, I'm gonna fold that over. I'm gonna let that sit and rise for a little bit. I'm gonna kind of let this thing puff out and do its thing. And when I come back, we're gonna wrap this thing. We'll probably use some rope, we'll probably use some chain, and we'll start distressing this thing, man, start to make it look like a real hanging body. Okay, YouTube, so I went ahead and basically finished off the body. I kind of just tucked some foam under our, uh, our flaps. I tied off the head. 
The chain is uh, coming out the back, and I just safety pin the back of the, the head material down so it looks like it's sort of in a head sack. So now we gotta wrap this body before we start to stress in, so we gotta make a couple of uh, decisions. Uh, we've got, how do we wanna wrap this body? Do we wanna use a dollar store rope? Uh, at a dollar a piece, like I said, these guys are such a deal, buy it all. When you go there, buy it all, you can use it for a bunch of projects. Do you want to do chain? I have a bunch of chain, a uh, plastic chain from Amazon that I've had forever. It's pretty cheap. You can buy like 25 foot lengths of it for like 10, 12 bucks. Or do you want to go like uh, Gangland, New York, or Chicago Hitman style and go with duct tape? Or a combination of all three. Uh, it kind of just depends on you. It's how you want to do it for your bodies, or maybe you want to make multiple ones. I think for me, I'm going to mix up a little bit of the rope. I've got some excess here, and I've got some plastic chain from Amazon. So I'm going to do the chain rope, probably a little bit of a, a hemp rope, and this is what I like to do. We're going to go ahead and get this chain prepped. I just find the end. I take a red scuff pad or a scotch Bright pad, and I just pull the chain right through it. That go ahead and scuffs the chain, takes that nice shine off that plastic, plus it scuffs it up a little bit. And I do that a couple of times, which I've already done, so you get to the end of the chain. So once your chain's nice and scuffed and you knock the shine off of it, I just like to pile the chain on the body. Make little loops if you can. And we're gonna do this right on the body. This is the most organic way to paint chain. So you just make some loops. Okay. So we're kind of coiled up in a loop. I've got a couple of colors. I've got a flat orange, and you want to use flat for rust. Uh, I got an espresso satin, so when that rust is really dark, uh, your, your brown color shows up. And I don't want to go with silver, because silver is bright. I want this guy sort of uh, like a dark old nasty chain. So I've got just some silver graphite paint. So what I like to do is just put the chain in a coil, and then I'll go ahead and I'll put my brightest color on first, which is the graphite. So that shows some, some metallic on the chain so it doesn't look so fake and plastic. But again, if you want, you can flip it or you can pick it back up, move it around, it don't matter. But you want that kind of coiled thing so that every piece of chain gets a little bit of color on it so you want to stretch it out. Then you just hit it again. Where's our silver or our graphite? Okay. And again, I try and start from my darkest color out or silver, silver out because you can always cover that later. So this is the dark brown that looks like a base of a rust. And we'll just flip the chain over. We hit some on this side. And we're just pressing our body at the same time. So you can just lean it on some places if you want it extra dark and brown. And then we come back and top coat it with our bright rust color. So we had some metallic on there. We got that dark, dirty chain like it's starting to get ready to rust. And then again, you can stab in anywhere you want. Dust the chain. It don't matter. If you like heavy rust, put more rust on. If you want to throw a little bit of red in there or dark red orange so it looks like it's fresh rust, again, flip your chain. And we're done, man. Our chain's ready to go and wrap this guy. So this, plate, this part we're going to worry about later. We can go ahead and distress. I'm going to put the chain on before I distress. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this guy. And I'll probably use a little bit of rope. And when I come back, we're going to distress this guy and throw details on him and call this guy done, man, and get him hung on a tree outside. Okay, YouTube, so the body is wrapped. I did a little bit of chain, then I did a little bit of the rope. Uh, kind of a combo of both. And for the chain, when the chain got close to each other, I just took a little zip tie and zipped it together. Although this is plastic chain, you could easily snip it and then interlock it, no big deal. Uh, this is sort of, like I said, however you want to do it. So now we're going to go ahead and distress this body. I love my go-to writ dies, but there's a couple of things. Uh, if you have a sweet, like a... Uh, a themed uh, haunt, like say maybe you got a, a swamp theme, then you could easily take some green moss, some Spanish moss that we just got from Dollar Days, maybe a little greenery and tuck it in the guy. Maybe they just pull them out of the swamp somewhere. You could use a lot of greens in color. You know, I've got some Rit Dye Green that shows up really good. Uh, make him look like he's all moldy and nasty. Um, like I said, you could do like a Chicago gangland hit. You could put some bullet holes in and then just pour some blood down the hole, sit them up. So there's really all kinds of things you can do. But first, before I do any little details like that, I'm going to go ahead and get this guy prepped. So I've got all my Rit Dyes here. I just dump a little bit in the bottle. I've got some fabric paints, but the good thing is, you don't need fabric paint. You can use Rust-Oleum paint or rattle can or whatever the hell you want to use. It don't matter. So for me, I love using the Rit Dye. I think this is a gray color. 
And again, now you're not working on me. I'll be goddamn you son of a bitch. Okay, so what is this color? A brownish color, I think? Yeah, there we go. So, I mean, you can just splatter your body however you want, make them all nasty, make them look like they're sweat stains, make them look like he was, you know, a uh, filthy mouth. Just hit everything, boots, everything from top to bottom. Then we'll flip them over too, because you definitely want to do the backside. You know, like I said, I'm a home haunter, this stuff hangs outside. You know, it's like, man, you can load them up, make them look like he had a total freaking accident, like he was hanging there for days and soiled himself. Yeah, there we go. And then just let it run down. So Rit dye, I love. It'll soak right into this rag. It'll look great. Um, like I said, if you're going to do a specific theme, man, go ahead and load up on those colors if your haunt has different colors. But man, I'm going to mix and match. I got some yellow here. Well, we definitely want to stain some yellow here. Looks like he had some issues. Yeah, there we go. Right down the front. Yeah, nice and deep. Little rivulets. We could actually stand this guy up if you want to, too. I could hang him from a hook in the ceiling and make sure everything runs downstream. But yeah, anything you want to use, spray paints. You know, I got some glossy wood tone. I've got some gray. Of course, it's not going to stick on the, the wet fabric, but man, why not use it anyways, you know? Again, you could hit your ropes. You could use stains behind the ropes. Like, say the ropes are all dirty and nasty. So we'll take a brown and we'll just outline the ropes right underneath them. Right around the neck where everybody's sweating. Hit the ropes, you can paint your ropes, or you can go back after the paint's on there and take your brown and soak the rope. It'll bite right into the rope and make it nasty and dirty. Like I said, hit the boots too, it don't matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this guy around and distress him, and then I got a couple little things maybe I wanna do to him. We'll finish this guy up, man. Okay, guys, I got him hanging from a hook on the ceiling. Take a little look at him. He's all been worked over with Rit dye and spray paints. I touched up his chain. But we've got less than 25 bucks on this guy. And I've got one last detail I want to add to this guy that I think is really going to put the creep factor over the top. Okay, YouTube. So our last little detail, I want to give this guy an eyeball. So a couple of years ago at Target for Halloween, they had like three and four packs of these for five bucks. So I think it'd be really creepy to stick a little eye in one of his holes, like peeking through. So I've got some DevCon, and i got a razor blade. And I want to go ahead and cut a little slot if that's like the bridge of his nose where the corner of the milk jug is. I want to do a little slit. Make it rough and kind of nasty. Yeah. So it's kind of shredded. And just stick my finger in there and wallow it out some. Okay, so we're down to the second layer of burlap or of uh, painter's tarp. Let's go through that and get down to that trash bag because that trash bag is glued down and that waterproofs, and at least water sheds most of our project. So we can shred all that, open that up, shred that out as much as we want, so we can make room for that eyeball. And then I'll put a couple of cuts in here just to get down to the plastic. All right, so now we got us an eye hole. Then I'll go with this smaller green eye. That looks pretty creepy. I don't know if you'll be able to see it from a distance or not uh, when he's hanging up on a tree or in the yard somewhere. But again, you can do any little steps you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some generous DevCon in there. And there it goes. I love this stuff. Five minute epoxy. So we'll just squeeze it in there. Drop it in. Then, see how I want to clock our eye like this? Yeah, maybe like that. Then I will go ahead and put some on the back of the eye. Come on, DevCon. Work with me here. Okay. Be generous, because I only want to do this one damn time. Okay, then I'll just go ahead and leave the syringe on him. It don't matter if it leaks. Let's tuck that eye in there. Yeah, I like that. I'm just going to swirl it around a little bit. Leave that hole ragged. Maybe over the years it'll fray some. And then we're just going to go right on top with some more DevCon. Just to kind of seal it in. And I'll brush this out. 
and then we'll have us a creepy, wet, glassy eye. Okay, YouTubes, so here's what we started with, our $325 burlap body bag, uh, not including shipping or anything, and here's ours. Check that out. We went ahead and used just a $2 tarp I got from the uh, yard sale, some plastic chains, some dollar store rope, you know, a milk jug, we got the eye put in there, I'll bring it in closer and show you guys in a second. A pair of $5 thrift boots, oh, man, we got us a 360 degree prop that can be outside, that's waterproof, that we ain't got to worry about. Uh, man, you know, I, I don't think anybody could do better. And we made it ourselves, we could fold it in half to put it away up in the rafters and out of the way, so overall I'm real happy with them. The eyeball turned out creepy, so uh, let's take a closer look at this thing. Alright guys, here's our close up look. I love the glossy eye. Again, it's just gloss. I've had this guy sitting outside all night tonight. Spray gloss right on, uh, right on top of the uh, painter's turf to give it the uh, wet feeling. There's our plastic chains, our dollar store rope. All the way down to our $5 thrift Timberlands. But man, I'm real happy with them. I mean, man, look at that. We got us a 360 degree prop. We can fold them in half and stick them up in the rafters. You could add some more to it. I mean, you could easily add some bullet holes and some blood wounds or some stab wounds. I love just all the piss running down his legs. Give a little accent in the back. It's pretty cool. Overall, man, I don't think we could do better for 35 bucks, man, from head to toe. How do you beat that? Yeah, it sure is a hell of a lot cheaper than $35. Or $35 sure is a hell of a lot cheaper than $325 plus blood and shipping. So that's our guy. Okay, Hong fam. That's our $35 head to toe 360 degree uh, body bag victim. I'm real happy with them. Man, it's an easy project. You guys can do this at home with just dollar store crap and thrift shoes. Or like I said, the options are endless, man. You can just about add anything you just want or time into your own uh, home haunt theme. So uh, I see you guys again, man. Go check out my brothers in the Trio of Terror, Vic over at Monster Misfits and Dave at the Weird Kid Show. And man, if you guys want to build some body bags of your own and some victims, post them on my Facebook page at Cobwebs and Candlesticks. So, uh, so I see you guys again. Keep it evil.